Hey guys, before the video starts, I just want to warn you that there is a story about cops in this and I recorded this before everything went down. So if you don't want to listen to that, uh, skip the second story. And that, I really hope you enjoy the video. Thanks guys! Hey guys, it's 242 here and today I'm going to read you two stories from the subreddit Legal Advice. So sit back, relax, as I tell you these stories. So our first story is, my college says if I miss class to testify at my assault trial, they'll drop me from my classes. Louisiana. I was sexually assaulted while home over a break, not by another university student. And the trial of my attacker starts in two weeks. I'm a university student about five hours driving distance from my hometown where the assault occurred and I'll need to travel there to testify at the trial. I've spoken to my advisor and all of my professors, notifying them of the day I'd be out, and everyone was understanding, giving me any take-home versions of any tests or work I'd be missing. Unfortunately, one of the days I'll likely need to be out coincides with midterms, so my professor was required to get approval from the academic dean and the dean of the college to issue a take-home midterm. His request for the take-home midterm was denied, and when it came to the attention of these deans, they contacted all my professors and informed me if I missed that many classes, it would be approximately two of each class, maybe three depending on some court scheduling, and four of another class, but it meets every day of the week. My professors were comfortable making these as reported absence, which basically means there was a justification like a doctor's note or other official documentation. I showed the deans that I was in fact being called to testify by the defense so it wasn't even really like I had a choice. I figured that'd be enough documentation. The dean said that personal non-medical conflicts could not be counted as reported absences and would be treated as an unreported absence. So treated as the same thing as if I had just slept through the class. They suggested I apply for a leave of absence for the semester because otherwise I'd be dropped from my classes at the third absence and be on probation if I dropped from two or more classes. This is school policy. This attack took enough from me already. I went to great lengths to be sure I didn't miss a day of school while recovering. I do not want this man to derail my life further by pushing back my graduation date. I spoke to the title of IX office, who promised they could help me, but it turns out their idea of helping was helping me plan my leave of absence. I do not want to take a leave of absence. All my professors were ready and willing to work with me, and I was slash am entirely capable of keeping up with the work. Do I have a legal recourse here against the school? Thank you in advance. I'm surprised the school isn't willing to work with her, as in the deans, not the professors. She doesn't get a choice when the court date is. That's set by the court, of course and she is probably a very key witness, and she needs to be there. So one way or another, she needs to figure this out. So let's see what the comments say. Reddit Main says, If it's one of the deans holding up the process, appeal directly, but super politely, via email, attaching your proof of court dates and okays from your professors to the provost or president of the university. There's always an appeal process, informal or formal, at the university, and just because someone's a dean doesn't mean they know what the heck they're doing. Title IX coordinators, despite their we're here for the students motto, ultimately are there to cover the university's backside in case of a protective activity lawsuit so that they don't lose their federal funding. Same with the ombuds. A firmly worded letter from the attorney to the supervisor of the dean denying your request should also do nicely. Colleges hate lawsuits over stupid stuff like this. 
and I promise you that the administrator who denies your request will catch hell once this is escalated. My best to you these next few weeks. And that was really the best one of all the comments, so we're going to go to her update. Thanks to everyone and the terrific advice, I got the university's ombudsman involved and also reached out to a local survivor group, similar to RAN, who connected me to a wonderful attorney who facilitated between me and the legal service team at my school. Within a day of meeting the school's general counsel, my attorney and I were invited to meet with the deans who had made the initial decision. One of my professors also apparently saw my legal advice post and put two and two together. My professors were not previously aware of the full extent of what was going on, and he and my other professors submitted a letter on my behalf protesting the administrator's decision, copying the board, ombudsman, legal counsel, and the high-level members of administration which was so incredibly touching, I'm still overwhelmed in trying to properly thank them. Between my professor's incredible gesture and my showing up with the attorney, raising flags, at the meeting I was given a carte blanche to work on details of my absence between myself and my professors. I'll take them at school just early. And two were able to give me modified assignments that could be done at home and still exemplify the same knowledge and skill set. The Obitsman and the legal counsel assure me they're looking into the policy that caused this ordeal in the first place. The Obitsman is making sure the policy is correctly and responsibly being enforced, e.g. not used to coerce students into violating a subpoena, and the legal counsel is advising the administration on a new guideline for the policy so no one else has to experience this going forward. Thank you to everyone here who took the time to give me such helpful advice. I appreciate all of you. So this was posted over a year ago, so her court date has passed, so I'm hoping that went okay for OP, but it seems like OP did get the advice she needed and was able to figure out where she needed to go, and the university slash college is going to fix this problem, hopefully, so no one else has to go through it. So our next story is... I followed and reported a drunk driver, then I got a ticket for driving past curfew. Last week, I was driving home from my friend's house when I noticed someone driving very radically. They were swerving when there was nothing to avoid and they couldn't stay in their own lane, so I called the police and followed them. The police caught up to us after a while and they pulled over the driver. It turns out that he was extremely drunk and when they gave him a sobriety test, he failed them miserably. He was arrested and the police asked me to write a statement and give them my information. I gave one of the cops my driver's license. I'm under 18, so he could copy my address and he said that I wasn't allowed to be driving because it was past 11. I told him that I would have been home by 11, but I noticed the drunk driver and I didn't want someone to get hurt, so I followed them. Plus, when I called them, they asked me to keep following the man even though it was technically past curfew. The officer said that it didn't matter even if me driving past curfew meant that World War III was prevented that the law is the law and that he had to give me a ticket because I broke curfew. He said he would have given me another ticket if I drove home myself, so I called my parents and they came and picked me up and drove the car I was driving home. This feels so wrong. I did a good thing and I'm getting punished for it. Am I really going to have to pay this ticket or do I have some way out? I'm thinking of calling the police station and asking them to reduce the fine, but at this point I'm really anxious because I have to mail something back to the court in a few days, otherwise I get arrested and I don't know what to do. I'm in Pennsylvania if it matters. I'm really surprised the officer didn't have any flex with this. To my knowledge, cops don't have to issue tickets if they don't want to. I would be going to the court date and fighting this. 
let's go down to the comments and see what people say there. Turn down for what? Love the name. He says, the officer is right in a strictly black and white sense. You broke the law. However, he also is a D for not using discretion. As others have said, the police can't do anything at this point. It's up to the court. Judges are human too, and I venture to guess a judge would be pretty peeved. The officer ticketed you considering the circumstances. Plead not guilty, get to your court date, explain what happened to the judge, and ask for leniency. You could get a lawyer, but with traffic court, it's probably not worth it. There's nothing to be scared of either. It's much less formal than what you see on TV. This one really does sum up all the other comments, and this is pretty much what I was thinking as well. So there is an update, so we'll go to that next. Update. I took the advice that I was given and pleaded not guilty. Last week I went to court and here's what happened. I brought copies of my cell phone call logs showing that I called 911 before curfew as well as the same records from my carrier. I also got a copy of the drunk driver's criminal complaint with the help of the court clerk and I printed out a copy of the justification law. The hearing started with the officer saying that I was pulled over on the side of the road, that he went to investigate why I was there, and that I voluntarily confessed to driving past curfew. He said that was all he needed to prove in order to prove my guilt and basically left it at that. That it was my turn to speak. I said that while I did drive past curfew, it was because I noticed an erratic driver and was following him because I thought he was going to hurt someone. I had felt if I had let the man go that he would kill someone and that 911 had told me to keep following him. I gave my evidence to the judge and to the police officer and I said that I would have been home on time if not for the drunk driver. I argued that I had a reasonable belief that the man was very drunk and that the police are accusing the driver of having a .12 BAC. The judge asked the officer about the driver and he confirmed the BAC. Finally, I brought up the justification defense. I argued that driving past curfew was a summary offense and that drunk driving was a minimum of a misdemeanor and at worst was a first degree felony if he had killed someone. I said that the law clearly provided a defense for my conduct because drunk driving was clearly the greater of two evils and because I drove in an otherwise safe manner. The judge agreed and found me not guilty. He said that I had proven my defense by my preponderance of evidence and that I had done the right thing. I'm going to get my collateral back in the mail in a few days and my record is clean. That's really great OP. I'm so happy you got this cleared up. Really, the cop was a jerk for even giving you this ticket. He didn't have to. So remember, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you want to hear more from me, remember to subscribe. And if you do, hit that shiny, shiny bell. And don't forget to leave me a comment. I really want to hear from you guys if you have any other subreddits you would like me to read. So with that, I hope you guys have a good night or a good day. Bye!